Hey guys, what is cracking? Um, somebody give me a, a five for five in there. Um, and please share this out. This should be a short one. Uh, yeah, I'm trying a different mic. Let me know if the volume's okay. Is it better? Is it worse? I need, I need a little bit of feedback. Hey, Leisure. Good to see you, bud. Give me a little feedback, guys, and I'll go ahead and get going. You guys, I mean, can you guys hear me? Is it louder than it was? That way you guys can turn your volume down. Because I noticed in my last few live streams, I was having to crank the volume up to watch my own video. <laughs> so, I just want to make sure everything's okay on that end. All right, is, it, is it all good? It's good? Okay, thank you, Chewbacca. Appreciate that. Or is it more like... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm a Star Wars uh, geek, by the way. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Um, so yeah, what I want to do, guys, is I'm just going to start off with the space weather real quick, and uh, you know, please like, share, all that stuff. Hit the bell. Um, all that YouTube stuff that we talk about. So, uh, um, and thank you guys for all the new members. Um, I am. Again, guys, I will be doing, I might even do the members only live stream tonight. It just depends on what I got going on. Um, if not tonight, it will happen tomorrow at some point. Because um, I will be working on some things. So I'm going to take you guys with me, you know, just so you guys can see how I set up and all that kind of thing. Um, I think I'd be kind of interested for people that don't really know what that's actually about. Sorry about that, guys. I should have muted before I took a drink there. You guys probably heard that. I got a headset on with a mic on the headset, and it's a it's a good one. Um, I'm not in my... Uh, I share a room with my wife. She does her schoolwork and stuff, and I, I have a computer and stuff in there, and I got a stand mic that I use in there, but I'm not in that room right now. So um, if you guys start hearing any kind of crazy audio, please let me know. Okay. All right. So let's go. Um, and sorry for that long intro. I was still trying to set things up and I wanted to get this in. So, all right. So we're going to start with the space weather, like I said. And um, let's just go ahead and go. Uh, where do I want to start with this? I'll tell you what. Let's just go down here and start here. Um, you guys know I usually show you uh, this one. For CME tracking, there was a big there was a big eruption on the backside, and there might even have been two. I can't really tell at this point, um, but I'm pointing this out because these things are going to be turning back to face Earth again. Okay, and um, we're already starting to see some of those kind of uh, start to show up. And uh, let me show you that real quick. And what I'm talking about are sunspots. Okay. Uh, where did I see that at? Was it here? Yeah. So, I mean, you got a pretty decent sized sunspot right here. You can fit Earth inside that. Okay. Probably about one and a half Earth or one. It's not an excessively big sunspot. It doesn't look to be like very complex or anything yet. Um, how do we know if it's complex or not? Well, I've shown that to you guys here. So, here is it, this is a magnetogram and it's a colorized version. And that colorized version is, uh, are you guys hearing clicking? Is that any better? Okay, hold on one second, guys. Give me one second. Man, I don't know if it's going to let me change it in the middle of a live stream. Ah. Uh... Um, give me one second. It might. We'll try it. I may go mute here for a second, guys. Is it gone now? Okay. That's, that's what I thought was going on. Um, if I get this mic too close to my mouth, it's like, uh, my, I got a little, a little bit of a five o'clock shadow. And it rubs against it. So it is better now? Okay. Okay, so we won't even mess with that then. Um, 
Good. Thank you, though. Thank you for that feedback. If it starts happening again, please let me know. Okay? Um, I don't want to make somebody miserable trying to watch my live stream. Um, I hate it when I do that. So, But anyway, back to this. We got positive and negative. Shows up in, in blue and red. And anything in the northern hemisphere will be red-blue. Anything in the southern hemisphere will be blue-red. Now, when the sun cycle flips to the next sun cycle, it's a polarity flip on the sun. So what happens is that will reverse. So then you'll have red-blue in the bottom in the southern hemisphere and blue-red in the northern hemisphere. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Are you guys still hearing that? I need to know. I mean, don't be afraid to tell me, because I want to make sure everybody is okay. I, I'm still seeing a couple of people talk about that, the sound. Let me know real quick. I'm going to wait, because if not, I'm going to change to just go with the computer mic. Anybody else hearing it? I mean, are we five for five? Or what? On and off? Okay. Give me a second, guys. I'm not going to make you guys miserable. Hey, thank you, Mr. Floyd. All right, so I am going to try to change this real quick. So hang in there with me, guys. I'm sorry. I thought I could make it better for everybody. And this, this mic has done this to me before. And a lot of it, I think, guys, I'm using a Bluetooth headset. And if I was to use a wired one, it probably wouldn't do this. So I'm probably going to be muted here for a second. So uh, don't leave. Uh, let's do. Uh... Okay, so you guys hearing me now? Is that any better? All right, thank you guys for that patience there. Um, I will go ahead and just... Uh... Okay, I think I'm good now. Are we good now? You guys will probably have to turn it back up, just so you know. <laughs> no, I actually, I thought it might have been that, but it's not Miss V. <laughs> Good catch, though. Good catch. All right. Yeah, I know. It's going to be low, so you guys are going to have to jack it up. And that's, I've already got the decibels up. If I go much more, you're going to get, like, an echo really, really bad. Um, well, if you say it's worse, I'm talking about, I'm trying to get rid of the cracking. Yeah, I use this is usually how I set up right here. This is my normal setup. So, yeah. So we're gonna roll with this. If you guys could just turn it up. Next live stream will be better. <laughs> Promise. Um, technical crap when you're trying to run a YouTube channel on your own, you know. Um, but anyway, okay, okay. We're gonna go with this is what we normally have. So I'll just say that. All right. So, back to the space weather. I'm sorry, guys. Um, all right. So, what do we got here? Well, we got the 211. This is from SDO. And we don't see a whole lot, but I want you guys to pay attention back here. We're having some backside eruptions. And like I showed you down there on the swarm, uh, well, on the CMU tracker from NASA. Uh... You'll see the atmosphere here of the sun get kind of disrupted. So we'll just kind of let it roll through here a couple times. I'm going backwards right here. So, and I'll point out some of the eruptions here in a minute. And we're not going to be able to see a whole lot of it, but you're going to see this stuff move. It'll look like it's like parting in the middle a little bit. So, you guys just watch here. I know there was one over here.
right there you see that i'll back it up so th those are backside eruptions now we've also had some movement here on the front side i don't know if that left the sun i can't tell you that oh uh, i'm just seeing a distortion in the atmosphere of the sun the corona okay um so yeah now these corona holes guys believe it or not even though these are small we can still connect to them and now they'll give us a little brief uh uptick in solar wind just because they're small but that is the surface of the sun so um we could see some space weather from that now let's go down here and check out the swarm uh the new model i've been showing you guys right here okay it's another cme tracker here's earth here's the sun hey brandy thank you since you started love your channel love from north carolina well thank you brandy i really appreciate that thank you for the super chat that's awesome thank you hey axe nacho we am trying to shout you guys out a little bit man get you guys some try to get some people up here to, to laugh with you and listen to some good music you guys got some killer content you really do i really enjoy it i'm not just saying that sometimes i'll shout people out just because i like the person um but i like you guys and you have good content <laughs> so anyway um so you got this uh big big time eruption here it's significant okay but it is going the other way and we did not get a radiation storm from it so i'm not concerned about that right so the eruption on the sun the only reason why i even bring it up is that we are starting to see more sunspots getting ready to face earth and the easiest way for me to show you that is to show you the 171. So uh, thank you again, Mr. Floyd, for uh, becoming a channel member. And guys, I am so sorry about that audio crap. I hate, I hate that when it happens midstream. I know Adam and uh, Dex had some issues a while back, and it was bugging them to death too. I just, yeah, it, it throws a big wrench into things. Your mind ain't really focused after that. Um, so I'm trying to kind of forget it, but as I still talk about it, right? Throw some squirrels up in there. Oh, well, I got a question about the how, how do I see the emojis in the that the members get to use? Just go under where it says see perks, and you'll be able to see all those. Um, if you're a channel member, they should just kind of pop up when you go to do a chat. They should be there for you. Um, I haven't done it in a while, so I really can't give you an exact on that, but... Um, and I will be adding a, a link for people that want to become members. And all you got to do is hit the link. It'll be in the description box. Or you can do it the, the old-fashioned way by hitting the, the box at the uh, bottom of the chat. Um, looks like a dollar sign. And it gives you options after that. But anyway, so we've got these sunspots getting ready to turn back in. Some of those survived the sun twice. The rotation of the sun okay two full rotations guys it takes almost two weeks for a sunspot to go across the face of the sun and the backside obviously so we're talking about a sunspot that lasted over over a month <laughs> so um it's crazy when you start talking about that but that's that's what's happening so when you get these these are getting ready to face us and they are firing things off back there so we're going to have to keep an eye on it and um, I'm not sure if the one that gave us the big X player is going to be, if it survived yet. They have some cool technology now that they're using um, seismic activity on the sun to map out what the backside looks like. Um, and they're getting really good and accurate with it. It's, uh, it's amazing, to be honest with you. So that's just what I'll say. Now, guys, um, I seen an eruption over here. There was stuff over here, and I'm not too concerned about that right now. We're going to have a couple days with probably no eruptions of anything that's going to hit us. Now, the sun can fire off any time it wants, okay? And let me show you this, because we did have a flare. And if remember I was talking about how our overall x-ray production has dropped out because we don't have as many sunspots, and it's kind of at a lower level? That, that comes into play with this. Okay, and what I mean is, if we were up here in the middle sea range where we were for like weeks, 
just hanging out there in the ambient condition mode because we had a bunch of sunspots facing us and then we get this same size flare guess what now this flare becomes an m flare okay <laughs> because this whole line would be up here so then we have to start talking about uh radio blackouts so i want to point that out because you know last week when we were seeing some of the m flares they were no bigger than this as far as off of the baseline it's just our baseline had risen and during solar minimum you'll see it down here in the a range sometimes so it takes a really significant blast of x-ray and in solar minimum if you get a big big uh like an x flare from one sunspot typically that's bigger than what you would see from a sunspot that fires during solar maximum because you have more overall x-ray already so I hope I explained that well. Now, they were forecasting a G1 storm. We almost got there, but we didn't. And even if we did, it wouldn't have been much. But we are, you know, we're still seeing some aurora, but we're coming out of aurora season, okay? They like equinoxes. We're getting far enough away from that now that some of the, like, the aurora photographers that do the, the tourist thing, um, yeah they're actually going home <laughs> you know they're shutting their business down until next season right because stuff is going to slow down now that's also a good point to bring out when you're talking about the tilt of the earth guys let me just say this if the tilt of the earth had drastically tilted okay because the axis does not like rotate and keep its nose on the sun that's why Polaris is always in the north, because our axis does not, like, turn as we orbit, like, like the SDO satellite does, right? So the fact that they're still having the same amount of daylight and nighttime in the Arctic Circle and in places like that and where you're at is all the proof you need that our tilt has not changed in any kind of dramatic way. Now, I will say this. We do have a little bit of a wobble that happens naturally also. I think it takes it, I can't remember if, it, if it's the 46,000 year cycle or it's like a 100,000 year cycle, but eventually our North Star will actually have to change, okay? Uh, it doesn't mean Polaris is gonna be off the map, it just means it's moved enough that now we got to use another star. And chances are, because of that little wobble, it'll come back to Polaris eventually. So, yeah. So when somebody tells you your, your tilt has tilted to 90 degrees, guys, we'd all be dead. That is uninhabitable. That means six months out of the year, you would have nothing but daylight on one side of the Earth. And then the other six months, you would have no daylight. So you're burning up on one side of the planet and freezing on the other. Does that make any sense to anybody? So, and the fact that sundials still work that have been there for 10,000 years, those same sundials still work. If our tilt changed, the shadow would move on a sundial. It's easy to prove. I mean, you could take a survivalist, throw them out in the in the woods, lost, and they can find their way out by doing what? Using a compass in the stars above, because the stars are still in the same place. They would not be in the same place if the axis of the Earth had tilted in a dramatic way than what ain't supposed to happen. So I just want to point that out. That really does kind of get under my skin because it's and people i just i just don't i don't understand how after that's explained to people that they still want to stand on that it it's in uninhabitable for a planet to have an axis at 90 degrees to the sun it's impossible the planet would be dead okay so that's just what i'll say now, move on, Mark. Quit rant.
Okay. That was space weather related, though. <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the, the eruption. Um, we did have a couple eruptions here. And again, you're going to see them here. And that's a backside eruption. Right there. Okay. So in that flash, it's just the, the camera caught some light somewhere. Is all that that is. Okay. Or the imager. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time showing you space weather uh, data right now. We did dip down to negative six right here on the BZ. That's the magnetic position, polarity. Okay. Um, we look for negative six. That's really all you got to remember. Negative six or more negative, and we really accept any kind of space weather really funnels in on our poles. Okay. Notice how things have kind of stabled out like I was talking about yesterday. See how we had popcorn? back here and now we got data that's looking like a straight line which means that the conditions are staying very close to the same all the way through here okay um so yeah now um okay so i was just uh my mods are sending me a uh, text sorry about that wanted to check it real quick it's all right, Trinity. We got you. I just read your text. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Guys, get over and check out her channel. She kills it over there. She does a really good job. Please go check it out. All right. So, this is the magnetosphere. I'm not even going to show you a whole lot of this because things have quieted down. We're not having any geomagnetic activity a whole lot up. Okay. The geoelectric, this is going to follow, right? But what I want to do before we, before I talk about the comet real quick and the eclipse is I do want to take you over to USGS and just kind of touch on this. There's been so many other people covering this, okay? So I'm not going to cover it a whole lot. I'm just going to point out the fact that we had a very strong earthquake for this part of the country. New Jersey, New York, whatever you want to call it over there. Um... It was a 5.0, from what I understand, and we had a uh, 6.8 just a few hours prior, okay, over here. So we had a big one in Taiwan the other day, this one here, and then we get a 5 over in New York. Now, I want to say this. Typically, a 5 isn't going to do a whole lot of damage. So, believe it or not, that's kind of a good thing most of the time because it is relieving some of that pressure. It's just like volcanic activity and stuff. When the geysers quit geysing, I guess, around volcanoes, you better go the other direction because it's building pressure and eventually that's got to come out somewhere. Energy in, energy out. It's really that simple. And that's how I, that's how I look at things, guys. So... It's like ping pong. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it really is. And it's bouncing. I mean, it really is like you look at these worldwide. Then we just had this one pop too, guys. This just happened. That's a five, six over here in Tonga. So we got significant earthquakes happening. Okay. Um, and again, we are coming out of that, that uh, Corona hole stream. Okay. So the space weather is affecting that a little bit. It's not the reason for the earthquake. It's just adding to it. It's part of the equation, and its number has risen a little bit because of a corona hole, right? That's how you got to look at it. There ain't just one thing that causes an earthquake. It's a combination of things, okay? And again, I'm not the earthquake guy, but I do understand that, all right? So we're going to kind of, I'm not going to go too much into that because it didn't really do a whole lot of nothing up here. It was just... It's odd to see a bigger earthquake like that up here. It doesn't happen that often. Okay? So I'll just leave it at that. Okay. So Dr. Tony Phillips. Now I want to bring this in right here. This is spaceweather.com. <laughs> you guys, it, this kills me because I'm looking at this, right? This is the solar eclipse and cloud cover forecast. Let me, uh, can I, will this, like, blow up for me here? Okay, yeah, we can do this. Okay, so 
you look at this, this is the path of totality, right? Where did that other map go? Okay, so there's a, there's a few different, the European models here, right? The American models on this side. So if we were to play that, right in here is probably the sweet spot. Guys, I'm in that bullseye. <laughs> just, just saying. Um, both models are telling me that I'm not going to have any clouds where I'm at. So that's what I'll say. Hey, Tommy, good to see you, bud. Guys, get over and check out the lifeboat. Always good stuff over there, guys. Always good stuff. They're doing a great job, too. They're doing call-in shows. Spanx and everybody got that up and going. I was I was really impressed. It's, it's, a, it's not an easy thing to kind of wrap your brain around, guys, setting up a call-in show. Well, heck, just ask Adam and Dex. It's not as easy as, as you think it is because you can't just give out your own phone number to the freaking internet, right? So you got to try to work everything around. And uh, it, we did it when me and Tommy were co-hosting, but um, it was it took me running stuff from the back so Tommy could concentrate. And uh, it it's not the easiest thing to do. So it, it's, it's impressive. It really is when you get things going like that. At least I know I was. I was impressed about it. So, I think I even sent him a text and told him that. <laughs> okay, so, let's take a look at where this comet's at. All right, this is called the Sky, the sky Live. All right? Um, there is a, a, a uh, link in my description. Okay, so I'm going to back off. This thing is really cool. All you got to do is grab it, and it'll move. It's a lot like Stellarium. It's just not the same uh, website or program. Hey, I'm live. Okay, so here we go. You got Earth right there. That's the sun. Here's your devil comment right there. People have been asking me, where's this thing at? There it is. So what we want to do is we want to look at it from our view, right? This is called the ecliptic. The ecliptic is the sun's equator stretched out infinitely. So it's an imaginary line, guys. It's just the equator stretched out, okay? So that's what I'll say on that end. So here's, here is the, the comet, and this is its orbit, okay? See how steep that is? So when the, when the eclipse happens... And you can change the date on this too, and it'll, it'll it'll animate for you and move if you want it to. So I, I highly suggest people get over here and start messing with this thing. It's really cool. So um, anyway, there's your sun. Here's Earth. This is the comet. So when this when we get the total uh, eclipse, when we get totality, this thing should be visible in the sky. That's what they're saying. Or there's a possibility of it. Because essentially it's going to be dark. Um, you're going to have some light because the corona sneaks around the moon. Okay? Uh, but for all intents and purposes, it's going to go dark for a few minutes. So it's going to be cool. This is a once-in-a-lifetime thing, guys. You're not going to see this again. And it, it, it really just, it's disheartening to see people just kind of throwing this to the side like it ain't no big deal. This is a big deal. Not not a catastrophic big deal. This is one of those big deal things that's cool. Okay? So take the kids out there. Put your phone in the garbage for a minute. I mean, come on. I mean, take your, take your shoes and socks off. Go put your bare feet on the ground. Do some grounding out there while you're watching the, watching the eclipse. And have some fun with it. And there's going to be a bunch of websites, a bunch of YouTube channels, live streaming it. I'm going to attempt to give you some something, but mine is not going to be at the quality that you're going to be able to get somewhere else. Okay? I'm just going to tell you that right up off the bat. I'm in the path of totality. All of the internet bandwidth is going to be gone here. They're expecting 100,000 people here where I live. 
and we we only had like 20 to 23 thousand people so the bandwidth of 5g is gone we petitioned the state for boosters and they can get them um they're shutting all the businesses down even the banks kids aren't going to school i mean this is one of those types of things okay so don't miss it it ain't going to last very long but just make it fun and there's other ways to watch the eclipse too we've all seen them you know we've all seen the poke a hole in the cardboard box watch the shadow and all that kind of thing um that's a pretty like it's like a middle school thing that you do in science class but yeah so don't miss this is what i'm trying to say and i'm going to keep you up to date because the sun as this thing comes down if there's any kind of alignments with planets and all those kinds of things because it is kind of lining up with Jupiter a little bit, but it's not exactly, okay? And it's not moving towards Jupiter. It's not going this way. It's kind of looping down this way. So when this when this does cross the ecliptic, okay, because it will, right here, that's where it's going to cross the ecliptic, right down here. This is from our viewpoint. So it's moving south, guys. It's got a pretty steep angle of an orbit when it starts to cross the ecliptic here the magnetic you're going to start seeing magnetic lines getting crossed and the sun could start blasting at it so that's just what i'll say on that we'll pay attention to it it's a cryovolcanic comet so it's already producing things it's the magnitude of its outbursts god dang it but yeah so um when that goes and it blows and all, all the you know it could get really really bright if it gets hit with the cme we've comet inky a few years back that was coming that came through our solar system um the sun hit it with a cme and ripped its tail off now it came right back because that's what's you know the solar wind is what's creating that that tail on the comet the solar wind's hitting the comet. The comet's moving towards the solar wind, so it creates the tail. It's debris from the comet. And the bigger comets will leave, like, like uh, the meteor showers. So some of the, most of the meteor showers we get are from older comets that have come through here and left less stuff in the way. <laughs> so it's just that way guys um so i'm going to keep you guys updated on this and you know and, and i'm going to try my best i don't know if i'm going to be able to do it i it's i won't know until the day of because that's when everybody's going to turn their phones on and turn you know start taking all the the bandwidth and all the signal um now i could get in my car but that would be the stupidest thing i could do because everybody else, they're telling me it's going to take six hours or something like that to drive across my town and it only takes 15 minutes from one end to the other and that's going through town that ain't like getting on the interstate <laughs> okay so this to give you guys an idea so my my plan is guys i'm going to try to set my computer up right outside of my house that is closest to my router so I'm going to try to stay on my Wi-Fi. If I can get that done, chances are I'll at least be able to say, hey, take my phone and point it at the sky and say, hey, guys, look, it's dark out, that kind of thing. And if I can see the comment, I'm going to try to. So just for a point of reference, again, here's Earth, right? So I'm going to zoom in from behind. And you're going to be able to get a pretty good idea where this comet's going to be in relation to the sun. Okay? Because you're going to go outside and you're going to look up. So, the comet's going to be over here. So, if we're lucky enough and all that happens, you know, it's going to be a really cool thing. Why does Skyview not uh, show eclipse happening on monday i i don't know yeah i don't know um if you guys go over to stellarium that's another program like this you can actually have it animate 
and you'll see the moon go right in front of the sun. They'll show it to you. Um, this shows it to you too. You just got to hit the, there's some filters and stuff over here you got to click on to get all that stuff to happen. See, I could, I could take uh, this, one of these other comments. Let me find it. This, see this comment right here? Uh, Panstar S3. Right here. Watch. I'll make it disappear. Click. There it is. It's gone. So that's what I'm saying, guys. I can you can you can filter this however you want. All right. So, um, but that is the satellite there. The comment there. I'll tell you what. Let's get rid of all the other comments. Let's see what we got. Kind of give us a more clearer view of where this one's at. You see where this one's coming down in between? It's coming down in between us and uh, Venus. I think. Hold on, let me zoom in here. Yeah. You see its orbit? So it's coming in between our orbit and Venus's orbit. Now, we might be having a different conversation if Earth was over here. Now, it wouldn't be like a catastrophic thing. It's just this comet would be big in our sky. Okay? Um, so, I'll just say that. But, anyway, guys. I am going to go ahead and pop off. Um, if anything happens, space weather, I'll be here. Um, thank you to all the channel members, the new ones, anybody gifting them. Uh, uh, Mr. Floyd, thank you. Hey, Ripper. All my mods, love you. Guys, uh, you know, if you want to support, please share the stream out. It's the best thing you can do. If you want to become a member, turn. if you do become a member, turn your bell on so you know when I, I put members-only stuff up. We're going to decide on some emojis this weekend, too. Um, I talked about that yesterday, but um, I'm not going to you know, spend a whole lot more time on that today. But get over to everybody I always talk about, guys. Marfugel did a uh, thing about the Devil Comet 2 today, I think. And then he did was talking about the earthquakes and stuff. Go check that out over on Marfugel. Um, get over to the Lifeboat. Doing great stuff over there always. Ripper, everybody else. So there's my shout-outs. Sorry about the audio issues early on. I was just trying to make it better for you guys, and I don't think I'm going to be able to use this as my mic. So I'll, I'll just continue to do this, and then I'll, I'll I'll get my other headset that actually plugs in. I think the Bluetooth thing is causing some crackling. So I think I got an idea of what's causing that. But anyway, guys, thanks for coming. Thanks for always supporting. You guys are awesome. Um, it humbles me and my family. So, yeah. So I love all you guys. Mods rock. Come back and leave a comment, please. It helps get the video out. Share. Share, share, share. Don't just share to YouTube. Share to Facebook, Twitter, wherever. I'm also working on getting something where I can send out my own notifications because this is becoming a big problem. And why I say that is uh, last night after Marfugel was done, I got a notification for his live stream four hours later. So, and I, I get it. I'm not trying to, like, take a shot at YouTube or anything like that. I just know right now it's it's an issue platform-wide. So if you see that stuff, just check back once in a while. I'm going to try to stream every day. That's, just, that's my goal. It may not always be at the same time, but, you know, turn the notification bell on. And hopefully they'll send you one. If not, just check back. I'm here. So, all right, guys. God bless. Yahusha saves. And uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.